Hey, we are from OpenUC2 and we are very proud to present you something that we have been working on for the last few weeks, which is uh, a microscope. First of all, what is OpenUC2? I think everybody knows this piece here. It's a Raspberry Pi uh, and it revolutionized electronics. So we are trying to do the same for optics. And we have been working on this little cube. You can open it and you can fill it with whatever you have. Lenses, cameras, lasers, illumination sources. And the cool thing is, it's open source, it's modular, and you can bring different elements together. So we have a, a small variation of different cubes. And based on the cubes, we have been developing this little microscope together with Seed Studio. And it's derived from the idea that you can put together different optical elements, just with the fact that the most important component, which needs stability, is now a monolithic brick. So here you have the optics engine, which is filled with a small uh, microscope, uh, camera from uh, the Seed Studio, the Xiao camera. It's an ESP32 S3 uh, microcontroller-based camera that you can program and use AI for uh, analyzing your data. And on top here, you have the degree of freedom to put any cube you have to maximize your functionality. And uh, today we wanted to give you a little tour of what's possible with this in the first glimpse. And then later on, we want to show you how, for example, you can add different pumps and uh, LED arrays to maximize the functionality. And for this, you essentially just need to put the, uh, the USB cable that was inside the box, uh, well, either to your USB charger or just your phone, and then connect your phone via Wi-Fi to the microscope. The Wi-Fi's name is OpenUC2X Seed. Then you connect to that, and then you uh, go to your browser and enter the URL, which is the IP address of this little device. So I'm connecting to this um, machine now. So you see this uh, website is also based on an open source project. And then you start the stream, and what you see here is the live stream of the camera. So right now it's pretty dark. So we would need to add the, uh, the LED, which is also inside the box. So it's an uh, ordinary flashlight. So you can either put that here or just print a little adapter that mounts on top of this little thing here so that you can mount the torch right here. Um, and then what you see here is a slightly overexposed something uh, as an image. And then, uh, of course, we would need to have a sample. For this, we have a small intense, uh, intense, intense, no, <laughs> intestine sample, um, which uh, is, well, from a microscopy slide collection. So you put that here on the magnetic slide holder so that it will stay firmly on the microscope. And then mm, we search for the spot where there's the sample, exactly right here. And then you can just use the micrometer screw here to place the 10x objective lens with an NA of roughly uh, two point, uh, sorry, 0 0.25. And what you see here is the result, I think not in the best uh, quality yet, so you can change that from uh, low resolution to the maximum resolution, which is uh, 1600 by 1200. Uh, and then you see uh, the histological slide scan, which is a uh, uh, HE uh, staining. So you can move around and observe different components of the cell. And yet another thing which is pretty cool, uh, where you can use microscopy is uh, when you have a sample that's not static, but actually living. So for this, we will just uh, exchange the cube here, um, remove the sample here. Uh, don't cut yourself, it's glass. We open the, uh, the cube here and remove the magnetic piece and then add a little chamber that's just a petri dish. And uh, we collected some water from the pond nearby and we'll just add the water with a little syringe. So um, it will be, well, probably never drink water again if you see what's inside. It's really cool. So you add this to the microscope. You again open the stream and then add the torch. And then we have to seek for some, some magic here. Of course, the water is shivering a bit. So we try to find some focus. So it's already rather cold here in, uh, in Germany. So we are based in Jena, in the center of Germany. And so these are some algae. Uh, I think we have to add some, maybe some more water. So there's less wobbly. And if we, if we just wait long enough, there will be probably some stuff floating around and crawling and 
searching for food. So let's let's have a look. But you see how much action there is in the in the pond water. So I'm not enough of a biologist to know what's happening there, but you see little cilia crawling around, eventually looking for some something to eat. And the more you search, the more you will find there. This is just the first episode of a series of some videos that we want to publish to show you, for example, uh, what you can do with just a little servo motor, uh, some rubber bands, and then some 3D printed components to, for example, uh, have a little slide scanner. Uh, we have also a module that enables you autofocus, so you can just, well, have it mounted on your microscope here and then uh, use the uh, focus knob here, which is then actually motorized. And then you maybe get the point why it's um, actually cool to have it modular because you can add any functionality you want. So this is a little servo that is uh, then controlled by yet another ESP32 over um, uh, MQTT. And then you can uh, motorize your scope uh, entirely and then actually operate it from remote areas. Okay, so this is everything for now. Uh, I hope you like it. If you have questions, uh, visit our forum or our, our online open source documentation. Uh, we're very happy to have you part of our growing community. Thank you very much and see you soon.